into the artist spotlight where we highlight local performing artists and artists in the Rhode Island, New England area. And today's guests are singer-songwriter Heather James and singer-actor Greg Bonin. Thank you very much for being on the show today. So my me. first question is, you've both been singing since you were very, very young. Like about when did you start? I'd say about seven. I had my first lesson when I was six. You had your first lesson when you were six? Now what made your parents put you in a singing <coughs> lesson at six years I old? I begged them. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I want to do this. Um, I was actually taking dance classes and I would sing everywhere, you know, since I could talk I was singing. And um, they were like, you know, she might benefit from some classes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apparently I benefited. <laughs> <laughs> now what was that like at taking your first class at six? At kind I was of, attentive. Okay. I was like, zone, you know, you couldn't get my attention anywhere else. Okay. But in you know in the dance studio I was there mm -hmm. and in you know voice class I was I was there okay. but everywhere else I was just like la 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 <laughs> and when did you take your first lessons do you or did you just start singing and then I just started with? singing my yeah. my parents were actually musical they okay. uh, they uh, my father was a singer songwriter uh, did country music really yes really <laughs> and then my mother played piano and guitar um, and they would perform together and then um, then they, all of a sudden they just stopped. So although I liked music, would sing all, all around all the time, they didn't want me to go into music. They okay. were against me doing music all really? the time. So the first time I actually took a lesson for voice was I was probably like 19. Now I find that interesting <coughs> that they were into music. Why did they not want you to go into music? I think they were burned by the industry, so they were sort of um, you know, jilted by the whole thing and okay. said they didn't want me to go into it. They wanted me into a real career. and. Mm -hmm trying to protect you. Yes. yes. So parents. when you took your first lesson, was it like a, a shock, a jar, from the way that you had been singing before to going into a, into a rigid? Well, it was, it was kind of shocking to me, or the way I, I, different teachers would, would uh, react to me, because, well, you're 19, you must know all the basics. I just picked things up as I went along, so like some of the foundational basics mm -hmm. I may not know. It's just intuitively I know it. Okay. So for them to go do this chromatic scale, blah blah blah, and I'm like, what is it? <laughs> so is <laughs> chromatic what? Chromatic you can what? Tell what? You just said yeah. what? <laughs> so is, is vocal training like like ballet training or, or dance training? They ask you to start with the basics. The classical training ballet gives you yes. the foundation for most dance. Is, mm -hmm. is would they say the same thing about voice training? Like opera training would be the foundation scales, or right? scales? And yeah, so they forth. do the scales and like some of the basic. Uh, Italian arias, oh, yeah. like those, because because yeah. <laughs> it's the way you position your mouth, and they want you to be able to do the technique first, and okay. then you can branch off into other things. Okay, coming from the <clears throat> classical opera, that's mm -hmm. that's what they always wanted was you have to know the basics first, and then you can go off and do that pop stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That way, you don't, that way you don't hurt yourself because yeah. you can develop polyps yes. and all of the yep. other stuff too. So it's good yeah. to have classical background. Okay. But you both also have a background in musical theater. And then you yes. went off to do pop dance style mm -hmm. music, and you mainly you've done a very classical opera training. Yep. Baritone is that baritone, a yeah. baritone? So what? How do you go from musical theater to getting this this other styles of music? Was it organic, or did, was it something you wanted to just try? And for me, it was organic. Okay. I mean, when I first started singing, it was always pop music. Mm -hmm. But then they said you need the classical training so that if you're really going to do this, then you, we don't want you to hurt yourself. We want you to do it the right way, mm -hmm. this and that, breathing and what have you. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, it was, I think I started with pop music. Who didn't love Madonna? True. Okay, so that's, yeah. that's my inf that was my influence to start with. Mm -hmm. So then, then I went into the classical, and then I found musical theater, and then I realized, oh my gosh, you can act, dance, and sing in the same place. This is fantastic. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then my heart was called back to, okay. excuse me with the microphone, my heart was called back to the pop. Oh, okay. So you, I, I, um, I grew up with country. Right. So that's going to, John's still reeling from that. I just, yeah, I just, I, 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 our own Garth Brooks right here. <laughs> so I grew up with country and then I, I liked pop music and mm -hmm. grew up in the 80s. Like my favorites were like Duran Duran, George Michael, In Excess. Good stuff. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. just like. <laughs> if, if I remember correctly, you actually have Britney Spears on your, on your iPod, right? Yes. I'm kind of surprised you didn't go into <laughs> pop dance music. <laughs> so is there a difference between, you know, is there a huge difference between going opera, because I know that you've done it, uh, yeah. the classical, and doing musical theater, or is it very similar? Oh, it's, it's very different. How so? I mean, you're still um, stand, you're sitting, standing in front of an audience, delivering, giving a performance, and acting, and... The opera, classical world, 
is very particular. Okay. There is no deviating from what's written. Okay. You have to do it exactly the way everybody else has always done it. And that I found a little stifling as far as a um, performer. Okay. It's like, well, you held that for three and it should have been four, or you needed to hold that, you know, you have to hold things the right amount of time. You mm -hmm. can't change it. You can't do anything different. That has to sound like the recording. Mm. Where so, in okay. pop, they want you to do things different. They don't want you to sound like the recording. They want you to be you. But you have also done the national anthems at different what baseball games and mm -hmm. so forth. What is that like? Is that really as hard as everyone says it is? You know what? For me, okay, I did it at two arenas. One was the um, for the Texas Rangers uh -huh. baseball, nice. and you had the echo. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay. For, yeah. And then um, I did it for the Dallas Stars, okay. where it's inside, mm -hmm. and I was expecting the echo. And then I could actually hear myself in real time, and I was, it, that threw me off because I was expect, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I think for the outdoor arenas, mm -hmm. when you have like what was it, like twenty thousand people, it's really exciting. Okay. And um, you're like, oh my gosh, they're all like looking at me right now. Yeah. This is so cool. Um, but you can't. You're singing "Oh Say," and then you hear "Oh Say." It's very strange. So it's a delay. You kind of have yeah. to get used to it if yeah. you do it a couple of times. But it was fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I. I Done it for like Boston Red Sox and like ice skating, uh, ice oh, hockey. Hockey. I'm not a real sports person. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what There's a small difference between ice skating and hockey. Uh, just throw that out there. Okay. <laughs> but I did it for a lot of sports teams. You're from like a hockey town, Woonsocket. Oh. I know. <laughs> I'm probably not allowed back into Woonsocket on the way home, but okay. <laughs> but I mean, we can cut that, up, that yeah. part out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did a lot, uh, and it, like Heather said, it was different from the different arenas. But one of the things I did learn was um, you had to keep your focus. Mm -hmm. Once you got on the field, you didn't look at anything else because you have to remember the words. Because okay. all the thing I kept thinking about was I'm not going to forget the words to this national anthem because you'll never hear the end of it. But it happens all the time, yes. and it just happened recently with you know yeah. a huge pop star. What's their name? And I'm like, <laughs> So that's what I'm wondering. I mean, is it really that I, because I wouldn't, I can't remember, you know, ABC to sing. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine singing that I song. I don't know is how it? they do it in Boston, but in, in Texas, it was a live audition. Okay. And then they put me in for six different games. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky to do six different games in um, for the Texas Rangers. And um, at first, I was shaking. The first couple of times I was mm -hmm. shaking. Oh my gosh, I have to remember the words. And by the third time, I think I took a nap before I went on, okay. and, then, and then I was thinking about what I had to do for yeah. the rest of the day as I was singing it, and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's over, okay, thank yeah. you. So you just let it go, yes. well, yeah. like any type of performing. Yeah. You like just... you, you know, it's like you're in sort of a meditation, you know, yes. when you're on stage, it's mm -hmm. just, it's what it is. Yeah, you have to do, do that. Uh, one, <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the things, though, I mean, I was, I got on the field, and I'm, I'm singing, and I didn't even pay attention. Good thing I didn't, because on the big uh, Megatron mm -hmm. thing, they had the words. And I'm like, good thing I was, I'm going to be like, am I singing the right oh, ones? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was nice of them. <laughs> yeah. And then another time, I got out on the field, and I'm, I'm standing there, I'm getting ready to go. I take the big deep breath and go, and I hear, duh, 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 and I'm like, <laughs> I turn around, I'm looking at the guy, I'm like, I didn't realize they <laughs> had my face on the Megatron. Oh so my God. they're like, <laughs> I had that big, huh? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but the scary thing, and Heather, you'll appreciate this. I'm like, okay. They stop that. I'm like, okay. I'm take a deep breath. I start again. I kept the key of what they were playing. Right. So by the time you're getting up to the high thing, I'm like, never oh, got up this sir. high before, but we're going to try it. <laughs> it was fine. Okay. <laughs> I always start on the lowest possible note. Sometimes you can't hear the first note, but that's okay. Oh. You what do you do? Like, oh. <laughs> no, is it live when you're like live yes. music or is it backing track when you're I mine, do it a cappella. Mine was okay. a cappella too, acapella. every time. Okay. Yeah. So it's a little easier to do it a cappella, I'm assuming. Because you can control you can, it. Yeah. Yeah. You, can, you can make up your own notes, as I like to do. Yeah. And yeah. your own timing sometimes. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Well, you did your first demo at 15. I did. So what was yeah. that like being in a studio with that young? Well, it just felt right. I was okay. just like, okay, so this is what I want to do. This is right. I was really lucky because it was like a, a birthday gift. My mom was like, okay, happy birthday, go in the studio, you know. Nice. So it was really, I don't know, I was really lucky. But um, I wasn't nervous, I don't think. Um, but as far as session singing, right now I, I do some work for a karaoke company. Okay. They make karaoke products. Mm -hmm. And so I go in and I sing the leads and the backgrounds, and then nice. they're like, okay, 
day's work, good job, you know, come back next month. And um, uh, before I started writing my own stuff, I would sing for other songwriters. Mm -hmm. And I would demo the stuff, and then they would shop it to the artist, and the artist would say yes or no. And, uh, and that happens in New England? That happens around, or do you travel yes, for that? Yes, it can. Okay, well, really, interesting. <laughs> it can, there are, um, I did some work um, in Cumberland. I did some session work for some work okay. in Cumberland. Um, and there's, uh, I mean, there's different studios. If you really want it, you just have to find it. You know, you just have to look for it and right. find it. Um, and when you send it out there, of course, it'll just come to you. you right. Know? You know how all that works. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's what session singing is about, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. and being in the studio, do you enjoy it? or Because you, you have three CDs, correct? Yes. Okay. I have three CDs, <laughs> but I also did a session work with a, a local artist years ago, Ellie O'Donnell. Okay. Uh, she performed at the opening of the convention center, and her song, City Nights, was actually chosen as the theme for that. Wow. So I was the background. I was hired for the background singer, and then we actually performed it there. So that was interesting to come in and work with uh, people and say, okay, no, do it this way. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Uh, but when I had to go into the studio the first time, I've, I've, each, I've went to two different studios. And the first one was in Providence, and I guess, a lot of people around here, they're more used to the, the blues, the mm. rock. Okay. So in walks me and they're like, oh, okay. They're trying different <laughs> microphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was kind of, the first one I sort of sat back and said, okay, I'm paying them mm -hmm. to do it, so let them do it. Then I get the, the CD back and I'm like, oh, okay, well, it could have been better. There were certain things I would have done better. So the second one, I sort of tried to take more control. Okay. So by the third time, I'm like, nope. That's it. That you got to do it this way. <laughs> you do it, yeah. yeah. By then, you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what you need to do. You exactly. know what you need from them, yeah. So is it a long it's process learning. when you're it in the studio? Can be. Does it take a couple hours? Depends on what you're singing. Yeah. For me, uh, I got uh, it down because, like you said, you know, at, when you're first starting, mm -hmm. you got to pay for the session. You got to mm -hmm. pay for the studio time. Mm -hmm. So, however much that costs, you know, it's like, I was nervous at first when I first started yeah. uh, paying for my own studio time, so I was like, gosh, I gotta get, I gotta get better. I gotta sing this, so, so then I would, what I'd do is, I'd practice the song at home, mm -hmm. I'd learn it from start to finish, okay. I'd learn all my, my, all of my harmonies, everything, and I'd show up, and by, by the third time I was there, I got the whole song done in an hour, and the producer was like, gosh, you know, it takes some people six hours to do this, and I said, yeah, well, I can't afford that, so <laughs> let's just go. <laughs> He's like, this is really good, all right. Yeah. So, so you got to get the process so you, now. you get in, you sing a song from beginning to end, or is there breaks? I mean, they play um, the, yeah. but it depends on It depends on the song. Uh -huh. It depends on the person. Uh, like, the first one, I was like, beginning to end, we did it. Mm -hmm. Then other ones, we did beginning to end, and then like, okay, I want you to do this section again. Mm -hmm. So you go in and do a section a couple times, okay. uh, but that sometimes you get annoyed because with right. the whole money thing, right. they're like, oh, let me sit there, and I'm just like, come on, hurry up. Yeah, <laughs> but then when you get to um, the next level where you don't have to pay for it, and it's just kind of like, you know, yep. uh, give and take type uh -huh. of thing, hey, come in and sing this for me, do me a favor, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a track, and you can write to it, and when you get to that level, then it's like, you're in there, and you're like, oh, I can do that better, again, Yeah. Uh, one more time. One yeah. more time. So one can, more time. Just you, until you, you perfect, perfect it. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. So studio singing or live singing? Because live singing, you kind of can't go back. So which do you prefer? Which do you, do you have a, pref a preference? I have a preference. You have a preference? Yes. Go ahead and tell us. Live. Okay. okay. <laughs> I love both, and I'll tell you why. I think live is really cool because you know you get the feeling, you mm -hmm. get the, you just get the energy from the audience, uh -huh. and it's like it's completely different. Yeah. Okay. Um, but since I'm a lot, I'm very much of a perfectionist. Yeah. So the thing I love about recording is because is you can make it perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that way, by the time you send it out, you're like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> of course, it yeah. might have taken me a little time to get it that perfect and a little tweaking and auto tune. Who knows? Maybe a little. Uh, <laughs> but when you're on, but when you're on, <laughs> it's for style. style no and judging. Effect. No <laughs> judging. We're in a judge-free oh, zone. Wait, they, don't, they don't use auto tune in opera. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> We just don't talk about it. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Focus. Where were we? I don't remember. So, 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 so it's just right. making it a little more perfect. Uh, right, yeah. you can perfect uh, it. And okay. then with the, okay. with the live singing, it's yeah. so exciting because you can feel the audience's mm -hmm. energy and, yes. you can, and you know that they can appreciate it and you can feel that right away. Yeah. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, the other one, you might get an email and be like, oh my gosh, that was so cool. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, even today, a lot, like a lot of the pop stars, mm -hmm. 
they can't do a performance without the whole thing being auto-tuned. Yeah. So, they even have the microphones. Yes. Yeah. That do it for you while you're singing. Yeah. How is that, how? <laughs> like, how do you do that? Because I've heard you both sing live. I I've haven't. Seen, I haven't done that yet live. I, I, saw, I don't think I, I will. I saw I, a video <laughs> of you doing. Uh, was it Bojam uh, yep. thing last year? Mm -hmm. or was it was a Christmas thing last mm -hmm. year. It was a, a benefit, and I saw a video of you. And of course, you were amazing. And I've, I've, I've worked with you, so I've seen you both sing live. I can't imagine having to tweak either one of your voices. Well, uh, thanks. It's just, well, thanks. You both have wonderful, beautiful, full, powerful voices. Now, when it comes to your, do you warm up a lot? Is there a lot of training that gets involved? Do you find yourself training more or uh, going to classes more when you're about to go into the studio or sing live? Or is it an everyday, rigid, I must warm up every day for two hours? Or, you know, I can only drink tepid, tepid water? Well, I'm, I'm kind of, depends on the situation. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, if I'm going to perform live, I think I'm more rigid about it. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to the studio, I haven't gotten to that point where I have that same rigid following. I'm just like, okay, I'm here. <laughs> Showing I, up is 80%, let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have, the, I have the Diet Coke, I'm drinking all the carbonated sodas, and <laughs> you know, like all the things that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, yeah. Bad Greg, bad Greg. <laughs> when I'm on the way to performance, I'm doing scales, yeah, I'm doing okay. everything, I'm singing it like an octave higher than it's supposed to be, I'm doing all those uh -huh. crazy, weird mm -hmm. Exercise with people are looking in the car, going, "What is she doing?" <laughs> like, it's nuts. Um, and I am totally ready for a live mm, performance. Yeah. But when I get to the studio, let's not let's not air this part. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I slack too because I know I can do it over. No one's really yeah, watching. Exactly. You have that. Like, but the tepid water, though, I always have room temperature. Yeah. Water temperature always. water. That's yeah. like I, I just. I've I don't do cold. Just recently started song writing. Okay, I wrote my first song when I was six. Okay. Um, but I, I feel official now because I finally have an, a, a placement on, you know, <laughs> like a major label, so I'm so excited. Nice, um, congratulations. Yeah, thank That's you. That's fantastic. Um, so now I feel like, oh my gosh, like this, this is, like I feel like I'm in it, you know, okay. like now I'm, I'm starting to like work with the right people, not that the other people weren't right, just I'm at this next level and mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. feeling great, I'm so excited. And nice. um, I had, last year, right before the holidays, I was commuting a lot to New York, mm -hmm. um, but the, mm -hmm. once I got the placement, then um, I was able to start my home studio, which I'm finally up and running. Nice. I'm so excited. Oh. And now I can just kind of Skype with the artists around the, you know, around the country. Okay. And I can, um, I can do writing sessions from my house, and it's so oh. much better. Wow. <laughs> Not that I don't like going to New York, but <laughs> it can be a little stressful every once yeah. in a while. But yeah, so I do a lot of work out of my home now. Oh. And there was a particular type of music you like to write, or is it whatever you're hired for? Or or something that, you know, it, you wake well, up at like 3 a.m. and you're like, must write. <laughs> well, lately I haven't been going to sleep until 3 <laughs> because um, I have a four-year-old son. Yes. And he goes to sleep around 8.39 if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. If I start the process around 7, then I'm, I'm good and okay. he's out by 9. Um, and then I'll just write until I can't, until I can't like, see anymore. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, it's time to sleep. So, I mean, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, once you're in that creative zone, mm -hmm. you can't really stop until it's done. Now, do you write as well? I, I, or do you I've written very little. Okay. But uh, recently I've been working with my guitar again, mm -hmm. so I've been starting to pick that up again. Okay. So uh, I'll start writing some more. I wrote when I was like 17, 18, mm -hmm. 19, performed some of those songs. So. Now you want to you do more writing? And yeah. More. I didn't know you played an instrument. Do you play anything else other guitar, than guitar? Uh, guitar, a little bit of piano, and trumpet. Trumpet. <laughs> That's a random thing. That was a good thing. <laughs> a piano, guitar, drums, maybe trumpet. How, how did you? How did trumpet come into? To kind of off the topic a little bit, but how did that come into well, play? Well, when I when I was a little kid, uh -huh. my parents said, "Okay, w w you're, you're going to do an instrument." I'm like, "Oh, okay." And I was like, oh, "I'll pick trumpet." Mm -hmm. I figured I'll tr start with trumpet. I'll be in the band, you know, fifth grade, woo hoo, and then uh, I'll progress into something else. Mm -hmm. So I played trumpet for a year and a half and I'm like, well, I want to play the piano. No, you cannot. And I'm like, oh. That'll prepare you too much for the industry. And I went, <laughs> I'm like, why not? And they're like, well, we don't, we're not going to go get a, a piano. And I'm like, oh. oh. I said, oh, okay, can I do voice? No, you're going to stick with the trumpet. <laughs> so then I became to hate the trumpet. Wow. <laughs> I hate the trumpet for you now. <laughs> like, do you find it easier though playing an instrument? It helps what, with your singing? Um, uh, Yes and no. Or does your singing help with playing the instrument? I mean, it's it's you're hitting the same notes, kind of. I mean, yeah. If I if I wanted to, I, I at least I can go to the piano and like play the piece if I'm stuck on something. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Okay. But um, 
usually when I perform, I've always just sang. I mm -hmm. didn't, but soon I'll be doing the both with the guitar. Okay. So I'm working on that. Yeah. Nice. We're looking forward to some yeah. coffee shop singing. Yeah. yeah. And and it won't be, and it's not going to be opera though. No opera. What no. will it be? Country. It'll be well. <laughs> there will be some country, but I'm going to do stuff like Creed and Hootie oh. and the Blowfish. And this is way too much information totally for you today. <laughs> I, like, I, wow, it's a whole John Edwards moment. He is crossing That's over, so isn't he? Exciting. Can't wait to see that. Now, speaking of crossing over, you both have a reach outside of New England, even though you're both New England based. Now, how is that trying to manage? You know, you, you know, your CDs have, have sold overseas. You say you're Skyping to people in New York. I know that you said you've written for people out very much outside of New England. How do you manage that while staying based here? The internet helps a lot. I know. For me, it's just so easy. Like Skyping, like you, like yeah. you know, it, I mean, it's so easy. Yeah. Just say, okay, how's Tuesday at seven? All right, see you then. Log on. Yeah. Really? Now, now, and now, when you send, you can send like music back and forth. Is that how it works? Or just you're singing to them over? Because it's going to sound a little different over the internet. Because I've heard people talk over the internet. I'm like, that's what they sound like. Right. Uh, you can still hear the notes. Mm -hmm. um, what I do, what I've been doing is. Um, there's three parts, I guess. Um, the producer. The way that my sessions have been going lately are, mm -hmm. you know, my publisher will get us a tra get me a track, okay. and I'll say yes or no, and then I'll take the track um, from that particular producer and I'll say, hey, I have this idea, mm -hmm. and then my publisher will also say, hey, you know, I have this artist or this artist, you know, um, here's what they've done. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I'll listen to them, and then I'll say, okay, I'll contact them and, and see if they want to do a writing session. Okay. So then um, I take the track. I, com I communicate with them a little bit, email, text, all that fun okay. stuff, um, and then uh, they say yes or no to the track. Like, they usually come up with a concept. This is way too wordy. Sorry, it might have been a yes or no question. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> and then from there, um, we set a date. We say uh -huh. you know Wednesday at eight, whatever. Um, and then we get it. Then we're then we're on. By then, we've both listened to the track. Okay. We both feel like we have a concept, and mm -hmm. we might have different melody ideas. Um, and from there. Mm -hmm. They sing. I have them sing their ideas first. Okay. Then I sing my ideas, and then we collaborate and oh. write a verse here, a verse there, and you, usually it's kind of like a therapy session. I end up saying, "So, how did you come up with this concept?" And usually it's a life experience for them. Okay. And I try to, um, I try to make it as much about what they're going through so that they can feel it and perform it to their best. You know, like I want them to really. Um, I just want them to feel the this, this song mm -hmm. and, and be able to make it their own, um, and. By the time we're done, it's just it's a full finished product, I guess. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I have I have a, a different side to that, but I, I think it goes along with this. But when I was uh, recording my CDs, because I was doing covers, mm -hmm. I had to go get the rights to all these songs and context oh. songwriters. Mm -hmm. That I found to be one of the hardest things, because when you go and ask people, they're like, "Well, I don't know what you're supposed to do." So you're like, "Well, I have to do this by the book." <laughs> but you can't find anything, and there's not really a lot of entertainment lawyers around here, so mm -hmm. I ended up having to deal with Disney and deal with uh, the, the Tarzan people, because uh, I did a, the Tarzan song from the movie. And, and then one of the things was I had to contact this country songwriter who owned a part of the, one of the songs I was doing. Mm -hmm. I ended up, calling, ended up calling his kid's school somehow, and they were like, oh, he's usually down by the watering hole, <laughs> and we'll give you that number, and I'm like, I swear I'm not a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, this isn't the East Coast. They're like, oh, we're at my kid's school, and no. <laughs> wow, okay. Wow. It was very strange. That's very surreal. But, yeah, and, and then I ended up paying people twice. Mm -hmm. So I paid somebody for their song, and then Disney's like, well, you owe us 100%. I'm like, well, I just paid somebody 50%. I don't care who you paid, you gotta pay no. us. Wow. So you don't, you don't have a, a lawyer then no. yet? Okay. Um, the fir I was lucky. Your parents, unfortunately, weren't supportive, no. and um, so we're all learning as we mm -hmm. go. And um, my parents, my mom was musical. All of my, all of her brothers were musical, mm -hmm. and her uncle was also musical. He's also a country songwriter, mm -hmm. and he. I was lucky enough. I mean, he's extremely busy mm -hmm. um, in Nashville and wherever the heck else he has houses. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but now I was lucky enough that um, I think it was in, I think it was in '03. I think. I won't say how old I was, but um, <laughs> in 03, I gave him a call. I'm like, Mom, I need that number. I got to talk to him. So I, find, I called him, and he gave me the best advice. And he's like, first of all, if you're really going to do this, you got to get a lawyer. And okay. don't get one from anywhere. It's, it's New York, LA, and everywhere in between. He's like, I don't care where you live. You got to get a lawyer from one of those okay. places. So of course, it took me maybe 10 years to do that, because um, I had a lot of other stuff to yeah. learn. Um, 
But yeah, that's 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 a really good thing to have. And then um, also with the the rights for uh, singing other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was just in a session, a writing session um, live with mm -hmm. actual people, not over Skype. And uh -huh. uh, the producer wanted to use. Um, it was like uh, an old 80s pop song like SOS or something um, and he said I said well how are we gonna get the rights to that because mm -hmm. you know I don't know and they're all like experienced and stuff I'm like how are we gonna get the rights to that? don't we have to pay for it and he says yes but the cool thing is having a publisher they'll yeah. take care of that for you mm -hmm. it's really really convenient yeah. to have somebody doing all that administrative stuff yeah. <laughs> and then it all comes down to publishing mm -hmm. Um, and then it's just a percentage that comes out. Once you make money mm -hmm. from using the song, then it's just a percentage, so you don't have to pay out of yeah. pocket. So, beyond, so much more convenient yes. that way. So beyond singing, there's a whole business side oh, yeah. to this that <laughs> most people don't think about, Correct. and that's how they get good. Can, can we say it? Say that? You want to say it? I say, and he finished. You can it, say so it. You can okay, say right? it. Right? Like. You can say, so it, there's definitely lawyer up publishers. Wow, yeah. that's a lot to think about. So I'm going to ask. You got to build your team and have the right people around you, like any like any other business. Because yeah. there are a lot of kids out there. They see things like American Idol, or and, and now I think it's X Factor, or they're putting stuff up on YouTube, and they think they're going to get discovered, and it's overnight, and blah 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 mm -hmm. blah. But yet they don't have any backing or so forth. So what advice would you give to them? Well, what I would say is that you need to find if you want to do something, you just have to do whatever it takes. Okay. So. Be, uh, be true to your craft, mm -hmm. um, be true to yourself, uh, and don't, let, don't take no. Because yeah. one of the things I've, I've come across is, like when I went to go try to perform around places, they're like, well, we don't really want an opera, Broadway singer, we, you know, they want the, the, the reggae, the, mm -hmm. the blues, the rock, mm -hmm. so, so there wasn't a place for me. Right. So I went like, okay, let me go find a place and I can rent, and I'll sell my own tickets. Wow. So you made a way. Yeah, you yeah. found a way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And um, and I was like, gosh, I want to do this. Okay, great. So what did I do? I just sang everywhere I could mm -hmm. sing. Mm -hmm. And then one day I woke up and I'm like, okay, what do I want to accomplish? And I just, I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down and I was like, oh, I guess these are like goals or something. Okay. So I wrote them down and I said, all right, these are goals. So then I broke each goal up and I, and I specifically figured out how I was going to reach that goal. So if I had five goals, on a piece of paper, then I had five pieces of paper. Wow. And then at the top would be one goal, on the top of the second page would be another mm -hmm. goal, so on and so forth, and then a list after that of how I was gonna reach it. Because there's a specific way you can mm -hmm. do anything. Yeah. I don't know if we can, we, well we can fly, we have planes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you believe you can do it, there's a way to do Most it. Most people prefer to fly in a plane. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I prefer I, planes too. I wouldn't, <laughs> don't cheat, leap off the house and do your flat your arms. Um, but they can also Skype. Teleporting would be so yeah, cool. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, everything's possible. Um, but yeah, you gotta, you know, be true to yourself yeah. and all that stuff. So, so basically just um, And cover your bum. Cover yeah. your bum. Cover definitely. your bum. Make sure your bases are covered. Yeah. And the other thing is, mm -hmm. somebody's going to say no. Mm -hmm. Guarantee 10 people are going to say no for everybody who says yes. Amen. Okay. That is so true. Well, that's and, you, and you and can't you know take what? that as, well, I suck. I shouldn't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But it's just like in acting, too. When you yeah. go for a, a casting, mm -hmm. they say no, not because you're not a great yeah. actor, just because you're not what they're looking for right, right now. Right. Definitely. Somebody or, else is a better fit. Or right. you get some people who just, you know, there's just some people out there just clueless, clueless mm -hmm. and they just don't hear it. I mean, I was told when I was 18 not to sing anymore. Wow. They're like, I don't know why you're singing. You suck. I'm like, wow. oh. Thank you for your opinion. Yeah. And at the time, though, I didn't take it that <laughs> way. I was like, well, maybe I shouldn't. Oh. You know, and then I was like, you're going to through them. Through <laughs> them. I was like, what words can we say? Kind of what words can we? Oh, we just already used that. Way. We can use that one. Wow. <laughs> So we're going to have to wrap this up right now. I want to thank Aww. you both for being well, my guests on the Artist Spotlight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into the Artist Spotlight, and we hope you enjoyed our interviews today. If you need to find out more about Greg or Heather, if we can find out more about you, Greg, you have a website, yes. correct? And what is www. that? www.gregbonin.com. Okay, and right. for Heather? Mine's under construction, but I'm on Facebook. Okay. And I'm also on, you can see um, some of my original music on Reverb Nation, mm -hmm. ReverbNation.com slash Heather James. Okay, perfect. 
Thank you again. Thank you. We hope that you enjoyed the interview. Please go out this weekend and go and, and see some local singers, check out some local music, buy a local CD, see some art, go check out a, a musical theater performance. Get out there and support the local arts. We do it because we love it and the hopes that, we, that you love it too. If you have any questions, if you want to send us an email or you don't know how to get in touch with our guests now or some previous guests, send an email to theartistspotlight at gmail.com. Once again, that's theartistspotlight at gmail.com. Thanks again for tuning in.